Hey, my name's Chris, and I'm the developer of Sling Code. Sling Code is an online application for coding web apps without using the command line. Basically, you can make, run, and share web apps using Sling Code, and I've tried to make it friendly for amateur coders and kids, not just people who already know how to code. You can run the app by going to slingcode.net and then clicking on the Try It link in the top right-hand corner. When you do that, you'll see a list of installed demo web apps when you first run it. These are here as an example for you to reference. The main part of the Sling Code interface is this here, the edit link. So when you click that, you can see the source code for an app and you can change the source code. Um, you can also add files, so you can load a JavaScript CSS file off your hard drive or an image, um, and you can create them from scratch as well by typing in the file name. You can reference the files that you've added from within the other files uh, inside your browser. Um, so in essence, it's a web-based IDE for building client-side web applications. It's similar, it's similar in uh, concept to JS Fiddle or uh, uh, glitch.com or sites like that. Um, but I'd like to talk about the three main features that set it apart from those other online IDE type apps. So the first feature is uh, a feature of the, it's a property of Sling Code itself. Um, if we go back to slingcode.net, you can see here that the entire um, application fits in a single HTML file. So I've, I've designed it to be fiercely independent or what you might call trust minimized because it doesn't rely on any trusted third party server. Um, if you download this HTML file by right clicking and saying save link as, uh, you'll get a copy of the HTML file on your local computer and it works perfectly well self-contained in that format. You can also put it on a USB stick or upload it to your own uh, web server. The apps themselves are all stored um, inside the browser's local storage on your device, so they're not actually stored on a server anyway. The domain I've put this on, slingcode.net, has no backend components. It's literally just a backend static hosting. So that's the first feature is that it's uh, independent of any online service. It runs completely standalone. The second feature I think is important is the live reloading. So whenever you edit code, um, you can see it to see the changes immediately when you hit save. So if we run this app here now, uh, there's two different ways of running it. You can run it in a new tab or you can run it in the same tab uh, adjacent. So let's say next to code. And you can see over here the app loading. Now this, the source code of the app is here and the app is here. Uh, it's got a little bit of functionality, a button you can click and it pops up an alert saying hello. Um, you can see that in the source code here, button, on click, JavaScript, alert, hello. So now let's try uh, editing this code. So it says, hello, my friend, and we hit save. And now when we click the button, that change has been immediately reflected in the live uh, version. We can also change the content here. I am alive. And you can see that immediately when I hit control S to save, we get the hello world, I am alive update here on the, this screen. You can also change the CSS. So we'll take out this gradient here and just have a single background color of red. And when we hit save, it immediately reflects on the screen. So this live reloading is fully integrated and um, we can even uh, include a separate JavaScript file. So if we say, uh, create a JavaScript file and we'll call it test.js this adds a new file and we'll put code in here for alert. This is the load and then save that one. And then we'll add that into our HTML over here. Test.js. And hit save and you see immediately it runs that JavaScript um, because it's embedded in the HTML here. And we can change that so that it says something else something else and when you hit save whoop, when you hit save it immediately reloads that JavaScript file hot loads it into the browser the same thing happens with CSS files so yeah there's quite a tight feedback loop between editing your uh, web code editing your uh, web apps code and the what's actually reflected in the uh, in the in the display window here um, now you don't have to have it in an iframe next door to the um, code. You can also, if we stop that one, 
you can also run it in a new tab. And what's great about this is um, you can break, if you have two monitors, you can break this tab off and put the second, put it on a second monitor. Let's just imagine that this was on a second monitor somewhere. And then you can have your code on one monitor and your live updating version on another monitor. Um, and you can do all the same sorts of changes. So let's again change this background color to red and save that one. Let's reload that JavaScript and you can see it reflected in this tab that might be on your other monitor. And so this allows for a, quite a natural style of uh, interactive uh, development that people are used to with um, other editors and command line tools, except it's all in the browser. So both of these are browser tabs. So now the third feature I'd like to show you is the sharing feature. Um, and to do that, I'm going to have to pull up my webcam because it's how we send this app uh, from one device to another. So give me a second to pull that up. So now you can see here I've got uh, Sling Code up on my laptop and I've also loaded it up on my phone's browser. So I've got two copies of it running, one on each device. Now what I'm going to do is take this Hello World example and I'm going to clone it. So I click clone, it says clone Hello World. Now I'm going to go in and edit the cloned version and I'm going to change the title to My Cool App. Um, and obviously I could make other changes as well. So I'll hit save on that. I might actually remove the icon just so that we get a nice uh, individual, this icon, this here, this uh, gray circle. So you can see that it's a different app now. It's called My Cool App with a gray circle. You could put other functionality in there, etc. So now what we're gonna do to get the uh, that app that I've written on my laptop, let's say I've made a bunch of changes, I've written a cool new app, I want to get it over onto my phone. So I'm going to say, I'm going to click on this icon here, the uh, the send icon. So I click on the little uh, paper plane and it pulls up this send interface. Now, all you really have to do is in the on the phone, hit plus down in the bottom right corner and then hit receive app. And that will open this interface. And if you scroll down and say, scan a QR code, then it gives you the opportunity to scan the QR code that's up on your screen. Oh, and that's gone too fast. It's actually just immediately connected and you can see on both devices it's uh, making the connection and downloading the app and it's done. So now on my phone it says added one app so I'm going to close that and I'm going to say cancel and you can see my cool app that's from my laptop is now transferred over onto my phone. Now that's done using a library called WebTorrent so it uses signaling servers which you can edit, but it's basically not tied to any particular provider or, or service. So uh, I think that's a pretty cool little feature. In this way, you can make your own little private web apps that you use, maybe you share them with people in your family or with friends or with workmates and uh, get them from device to device without needing to sort of set up any domain or centralized system. So yeah, that's uh, Sling Code in a nutshell. Thanks very much for listening.